Welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I am so happy and thankful that you came to craft with me today. Right now, I am smack dab in the middle of my Christmas series every Tuesday and Friday, Eastern Standard Time. You know I would love to see you there with me. And today I'm collabing with Miss Misty from Glee Spin Designs. I'm so excited about this. And we're going to talk about Misty just a little bit later. But for right now, let's get to crafting. Once again, Mr. Sabby is introducing our first DIY. We're going to start off with this little craft kit that I got from the Dollar General. I paid $3 for it and it's a nativity scene. It's got Mary Joseph and the baby Jesus and it's got like this little track where the rest of them stand on. So you can stand them in different places where they don't have to be like side by side and it looks more 3D. It's really a good deal for $3. So if you can find these, you need to snag it. Each little wood piece is probably about five inches tall, but the little piece there that is the stable is probably about 10 inches tall, close to a foot tall. So it's a really good deal. It just needed to be sanded down a little bit because it had like little hairy pieces kind of of the wood sticking out everywhere. But for three bucks, I'll sand it down. It's no problem. After I got everything sanded down to my liking, I'm going to use my DIY paint in the color Vintage Linen, which is my favorite off-white color. Now, DIY paint is clay-based, and I absolutely love it. And I wanted these to not have full coverage. I wanted them to almost be like a little stained. I barely went over these, kind of like dry brushing. And then I started using my little mister that has the water in it. And I just kind of misted a little bit of water and then lightly painted it to give it like a whitewashed effect. I ended up doing all of them this white look, but I didn't color that little track yet that you set them on. And I didn't color the star just yet. I'm going to use this paint that I get at Walmart and it's by Folk Art Metallics. It's called Color Shift. And it's called bright yellow and y'all it's bright yellow so we're going to do our star that color and it's almost like iridescent when you move it in the light it like shines and it's just a beautiful paint and it's really cheap i took my waverly antique wax and i put some water with it in a bowl and i just created a very light stain and anywhere where i went over with this stain i went right behind it with the baby wipe because my vision for this was it for it to be very neutral i didn't want anything to have like full-on color i just wanted it to have almost like a hint of color everything except for that star i wanted that star to be bright and for it to kind of be the focal point you know right over the baby jesus but that was just kind of my vision so i went with it and I used this stain pretty much on every single piece that went to this little nativity set, except for that track that everything stands on. Now, do y'all remember last week, if you was with me, I did two of those little boxes that I got at Southeastern Salvage. Well, this is the bigger one of the boxes. I paid $6 for it. I don't know if you guys have a Southeastern Salvage around you, but they're normally like building materials and they have stuff pretty cheap. And uh, that's where I got this at. And I thought it was a great deal. I'm going to use the home decor color that's called Rich Black. It's my favorite black color because it's so black. It's beautiful. And I gave this thing two full coats all over, inside out, all around it. Then I took a piece of black foam board that come from the Dollar Tree and I just laid it on the back and kind of traced it out with the little tool that I have so I could see where I needed to cut. And then I just cut it off to the size that I needed. 
Then I just took a few little glue beads with my hot glue gun and just kind of went all around the back, just enough for this foam board to stick, and it really doesn't take much. Then I took the little staple that has Mary Joseph and baby Jesus, and I put a little bit of hot glue around the bottom of it, and I'm going to put it to where it's high enough where you can see it really well. I needed a little height inside my box, so I'm going to use this piece of scrap wood. It's probably about an inch and a half thick, and I'm going to lay it down in there. And I just am testing out these lights, if I'm going to use them yet or not. And they are the favorite, my favorite ones that are those little string lights that are on the wire. And I like them on the wire because you can maneuver them the way you want. I put a little glue down in the bottom and glued that scrap wood down. And I'm going to get my lights exactly where I want them and use this electrical tape to just kind of tape them where I want it. Then I put some hot glue down on top of that piece of scrap wood and I'm going to glue my track down on it. And I already had my track with the people exactly where I wanted them on there. I took this roll of raffia that I've got and it's just like a big long strand of it and I cut them off in probably three to four inches. Well, different sizes really. And I put it down all around these guys and in behind them. I'm going to put down some glue and put some on the bottom to create the floor of a barn that's just full of hay. And I just cut off any parts that look scraggly or that were sticking out of the box too much. I went on the Cricut site and on their part under phrases, I found Unto Us a Child is Born, Isaiah 9, 6, and I absolutely love the font. It's exactly what I was wanting, and so I just measured my little box size there, and we're going to do that in white. I've been using this HTV Ront vinyl that they sent me, and I really like it because it comes in separate sheets. You don't have to cut the roll off and stuff, and it has a little area up at the top where that makes it easy to peel off. I'm really liking the way that this looks so far, but I'm going to put lights in the top. So here I'm pointing to a hole that I've created in the back. I'm using these little wired lights that I like so much, and I'm just going to tape them to the back, and the only part that's going to be sticking through is going to be the light, so it's going to look like stars. I tape my battery packs onto the back, and I put it in a way that where whoever buys it, it's easy for them to change the batteries out. I'm using glue dots, which I absolutely love. I've just started using these things, and they're so much easier to fool with than tape. And I put it over where I made the hole so that the little light don't pop back through. And so I just put about, I don't know, six or seven lights on each side of the manger. I also took a black Sharpie and just kind of went around each of the characters in this scene just to make them pop out a little bit more. Let me know what you think about this first one. It's finished. It's the true meaning of Christmas right here. Come to the water Where you will find peace Take a step into the river Get down on your knees Come to the mountain well, take it in the view You will find that life is Greater than you knew When you go through the storm I will hold you, keep you warm When you stay in the night I will shelter, I will find This week, I am so proud to be collaborating with Misty from Glee Spin Designs. Misty is an amazing, talented DIYer, and she can take some stuff from Dollar Tree, y'all, and make it look like it came straight from the Kirkland showroom floor. I mean, look at these lanterns that she did. They are amazing and gorgeous. And this few weeks that I've been talking to her, I've came to really love her. She is a sweet person and a good friend. And if you guys go and check out her channel, you'll see what I'm talking about. You're going to be blown away. 
I'm going to leave all her information down below. Please go check her out. And if you're coming over from Misty's channel, or if this is just your first time ever coming here, welcome. I am so glad that you came to give me a chance and spend some time with me today. I would love for you to subscribe and become a part of our family. And if you would, hit the like button because it really helps me out on YouTube. Now let's keep going. I'm going to take some Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to paint this board. Now this is just a piece of scrap wood. It's probably about an 8 by 11, maybe an 8 by 10. And it's probably about an inch and a half to two inches thick. Now if you see what I'm doing, I'm just basically putting this antique wax kind of heavy in the middle. And then I'm using that baby wipe and the moisture in that baby wipe to kind of rub it out and feather it out. And I did this to the sides and to the back of the board all over it. It's going to be a stand-up shelf sitter for my booth. I googled Christmas music and I picked the first Noel. And all I did was print this out on cardstock. Now I wish I would have had some cardstock that was a little bit thinner. Because this one was that real thick cardstock. But it's all I had. So it'll work. And I'm just going to go around it. And I'm very easily and carefully just kind of ripping it because I like that look. I'm going to use my DIY liquid patina. Now this is the exact same thing as Mod Podge or the same idea as Mod Podge. And I'm going to use a good thick amount of this, but only because my cardstock is so thick. So I just put it down and I laid my paper down. When it had dried, I took my JB Ranger Distress Oxide in the color called Gathered Twigs. It's a kind of a light brown color and I like to use it to distress with. It's a stamp pad, but it's really good to distress with. I kind of went around the edges. I like to use my finger to rub stuff in and get it shaded exactly how I wanted to. I even used a little bit of water from my little squirt gun and just kind of helped to rub it in and make this look like an old, torn, forgotten about song. Then when that's dry, I go around the top and do that whole part with that liquid patina. I'm going to use my transfer book that's called Christmas Valley from IOD. I absolutely love this book. It's got some of the prettiest stuff inside of it. And I knew in my mind that I wanted something on here, like a little bird and some branches. So as I was flipping through, I came across this perfect little brown bird that I thought would look great on this piece and like some little holly twigs. But look at these beautiful red birds. I am so enraptured by red birds right now. It's not even funny. And I have some amazing projects coming up with red birds. So you just take this off of that white backing and you lay your transfer on whatever project you're wanting to put it on. And they send you a little tool that you just rub it with while you're pulling up that little piece of plastic that it was attached to, and it just comes off on whatever project you're putting it on. Now I take these few little random pieces that I put up at the top. It's like little pine needles and a little pine cone, and that's where I want to put my bird at. And that's another reason why I like the IOD stuff is because you can put different pieces to create your project. And I really like that about it. My friend Lori at Milton's Daughter is who I get all of my IOD supplies from. Matter of fact, she sells all crafting supplies there. Decoupage paper, rice paper, paint, you name it, she's got it. And I'm going to leave her information in the description box below. It's www.miltonsdaughter.com. And if you use the code CRAFTYCATHY10, you can get 10% off. So I'll leave that down below. And now I have all my transfers on and we're going to use some polycrylic. I just went over this one good time with the polycrylic. I went all over this whole thing and it's going to seal it in. And then when that was dried, I gave it one more good coat on the front. 
I bought these small little bows off of Amazon, and I'll leave the link in my Amazon store below. I really like these because they're smaller than the ones that I usually use. And you know I'm going to put a button right in the middle of that. I chose a very small little black button, and I thought it looked good because you could put it right there on the side of the paper. It's sweet and simple, but it says so much. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It's the night of the dear Savior's birth. Now we're going into DIY number three, and this is my favorite of this whole video. I got this little cone at the Dollar Tree in the toy section. I took it outside and I spray painted it black. Now you can use it this color, but it's possible that every once in a while on this, you can see that, that little yellow color peeking through. So just spray paint it or paint it black. This just takes a few simple ingredients. You need some smaller pine cones, which I got mine outside, but you can get this same size at the Dollar General for a dollar for about 12 of them, and they're already frosted. And you're gonna need a lot of glue sticks, and you're just gonna need a couple little embellishments at the end from the Dollar Tree. So let's put this thing together. You're not really gonna see the edges that are around this, but I like to cut just the little tippy end of it off, just in case. As long as it still can stand up on its own, you're fine. And you see, I didn't cut off much. I start off with, I'm using all small pine cones, but the ones that are a little bit bigger, I try to put those on the bottom. But honestly, it doesn't matter because when this is finished, it all goes together. I had forgotten when I started this that I like to put tape down so that I will have something for it to stick to. If I just stuck it in there where all those holes are, there's a chance that something's not going to stick good and it's going to fall apart. So I just take little pieces of masking tape and put it all over it so we've got something to stick to. Now this is the easiest thing in the world to make, y'all. It just takes a little bit of time and patience. It's very easy. All you're going to do is take a little bit of hot glue, put it on the back of your little pine cone, and you're going to stick it down. And then you're going to make a row all the way around that first little bottom portion there. And you see, you don't have to really be careful. If you feel like there's going to be a space in between one or something, it's okay. It's no big deal. Just put them side by side. And I'm going to show you how to fill this in when we're all finished. This is just a repetitive process. You're just going to put your pine cones in a row all the way around. And then when you go to the row up above it, you're going to try to put those pine cones almost in between the two that are underneath it. So you try to put it right there in between those two and you just keep going all the way around to your next level. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing on that level above it. You're gonna try to go in between the two pine cones on the row underneath you. And so here I'm pointing out where there is a little bit of a hole right there, but it's no big deal. We are going to fix that. Don't worry about anything like that. Just get all your pine cones on there is the main objective right now. Then you're going to go all the way up your tree. I didn't show the whole thing, but you're doing the exact same thing all the way up. And when you are done, this is what it should look like. We're going to use these small berries, and they are just the regular red ones, and they are excellent. This is what we're going to fill in some of those holes with. If you notice, there's holes all in this thing. They're not huge, 
but all you do is cut just the edges of the wire off and you're literally just going to put a dab of hot glue in there and we're just going to stick it inside those holes and it's going to cover it up perfectly put as many as you want or need in there you can put one or if you need a little bit more space put a couple more it doesn't matter just as long as you fill those gaps all around the best to your ability now you don't have to do the, all of the little holes with the red berries. I did stick a couple of those little small uh, pine cones that come from the Dollar Tree, those little teeny, teeny ones. I would stick those in areas also, but I lost that footage for some reason, but you just stick those in the holes. You can't even tell that there's any difference when you're finished. So I went all over this and I added those tiny pine cones and I also added those red berries. And then we're going to use one of these bows that I got from Walmart. They're the little pre-made bows that I absolutely love. And I'm just going to put this right on the top. I clipped off the little back. It's like a bread tie. And I am just going through the different little tiny ornaments I have. Instead of a button, I'm going to use this little angel ornament. And I'm going to put her right in the center of my bow. Then I'm simply going to take and put some hot glue underneath the bottom of my ribbon and also on the very top of my tree and I'm going to glue that down and secure it really well. And then I'm simply just going to dovetail my ends of my ribbon. I've got one of those little square box things from the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure which one it is. It's probably from the fall. I popped the little backing off of it and I peeled off the front part and I took it outside and I gave it a few coats of a matte black spray paint. Now we're just going to use some tight bond wood glue and a little bit of hot glue and we're just going to glue our tree right down on top of this little platform. And I've got a little candle holder here at the side, but I like it better personally without the candle holder. So I wanted to show you pictures of both. Let me know what you think about this one. I made one of these for a festival last year and sold it for about $35 or $40, I believe. For the children above all, then you know it's Christmas. Santa's on his way We stand under the mistletoe And then it's Christmas Day The joyful times we witness Forever stays with us Soon Rudolph fears his wisdom And gathers all his friends when Santa and his missus wraps the final gift, you know it's time for Christmas for each and every one. Now we're on our very last one. And guys, this one is so super easy. I've got two rolls of burlap. I got one at Hobby Lobby, the black and white checkered. The other is from Walmart. And we're just gonna make a simple swag, okay? It's a garland. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. All I'm doing is scrunching, and I've ran a needle or a thread through a big needle and I'm just going to show you what I do here. I just scrunch it up with my fingers. And then you just run, simply run that needle right through the center there. And I do about 10 pieces at a time just to make it easier. Now all we're doing here is making a simple ruffled garland but it is so pretty when it's finished and i really like it when you use both of these rolls of six foot burlap i'm just making this for my booth if someone wants to buy it they can but it's just going to be hanging up in my booth for christmas you can embellish these any way you want and they're always pretty but see how easy this is you just scrunch it up with your fingers and then you're just going to simply run that thread right through it 
and then I'm going to go all the way down until I finish both ends. When I get to the very end, I just tie a few knots so that it will hold itself together. And I do that on both of the ends of my garland. Now I just used a couple of these little ornaments that I got from Walmart in a package. And I've got three snowflakes, three reindeer, and three of the little red truck. You could use whatever you wanted to embellish this, or you don't even have to put anything at all on this. But I thought it was really pretty to have like a couple of little ornaments hanging off of it. So all I'm doing here is painting them. I painted my snowflakes white, my reindeer with the antique wax, and then my little red truck. I'm just going to take some of the red imperial from home decor. And I'm just going to paint my little truck with that color. And then some of them had a Christmas tree in the back and I painted it green. Then I just took some of my little hemp cord that I get from Walmart and I just, the ones that I needed to pop a hole in, I used my little crocodile and I popped a hole in it. I just tied that ribbon through each ornament and then tied it to the string that was in the middle, you know, where it's all folded up at the top. Now I did, I did them probably about, I don't know, six inches apart, maybe a foot apart at the most. And yeah, about six inches apart is what I did. And I went all the way down through here and I just tied them onto that string up in the middle there that I have everything hooked together with. And when I finished with this, that's pretty much it. I didn't have anything to display this on because it wouldn't go right on my fireplace. So I literally hung it from the post of my bed uh, the headboard of my bed so that you could see it really well and how pretty it is when it's there It's absolutely gorgeous and I'm gonna put this right across the front area of my booth and I think it's gonna be really pretty Guys if y'all stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much I'm so thankful and proud that you came to spend your time with me today and don't forget if you're coming over from Misty's channel, please hit that subscribe button and stick around and stay with us. And if y'all will, please give me a thumbs up, especially if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to go check out Miss Misty over at Glee Spin Designs. All the information that I gave you in this video will be linked down below. And y'all stick around because Miss Bobby Joe, my cousin from the hills of Tennessee, is about to make her appearance. I love you guys until I see y'all next time. God bless you and your family, and I will see you soon. No hillbillies are harmed in the making of these bloopers. It's simply a glimpse into Kathy's Tennessee family meant to bring joy to those that love Cousin Bobby Joe. Hey there, everybody. It's me, Cousin Bobby Joe. Kathy's beautiful, adorable, talented, singing, stars in my eyes, cousin, all the way from the hills of Tennessee, baby. And guess what? You know my Vienna Weenie commercial and the spam commercial that I made? Boy, it has went viral. I told y'all I'd be going to Hollywood and getting out of these hills of Tennessee. I'm gonna make something out of myself, y'all, okay? So anyway, I wanted y'all to be a part of this big moment in my life because today I am going to be receiving an award for my grand commercial for Vienna Weenies. Now, y'all stick around because my cousin Kathy the one that gave me this here channel so that I can skyrocket to Hollywood, she is going to be the one to give me that award. And what a better way to get an award than for my cousin Kathy, who gave me her channel, that I can just show my appreciation to her. So, cousin Kathy, now what was that you said you had for me? Now, Kathy... You listen to me right now, honey. 
I have told you and told you, do not be agging my daughter on, okay? We all know what the truth is. Now, you shouldn't be doing stuff like this because, I mean, come on. She ain't no star. Just be honest with yourself. Bobby Joe, shut your mouth. I birthed you and I can say what I want to say. I brought you into this world and I'll take you out. Aunt Ethel, don't be mean. There is nothing wrong with me and my subscribers giving Bobby Joe this award. Now, that Viena company hasn't exactly promoted her yet or paid her, and we just want to make her feel like... We just want to show her how golden she is and how she will skyrocket to Hollywood. I really believe that. So, Cousin Bobby Joe, we want to give you this award. <laughs> That's right, Cousin Cabby. Give me that award. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I just don't know what to say. First and foremost, I want to thank everyone who has gotten me where I am. And thank you, Cousin Cabby, for letting me use this YouTube channel to show Hollywood what I'm made out of. I always knew that I was destined to get out of these hills of Tennessee and make something of myself. And that's exactly what I've done. Now, this is just the first step. You know that I'm still waiting on Johnny Depp's people to call me any day. Because I will be the leading lady in his next movie. Since he's just all the rage. And I just know they're going to call me. Because after this commercial... Who wouldn't want Bobby Joe Womble to star in the big movie that's going to be the big box office hit? <laughs> I can't wait! I cannot wait until I see my name in stars. And all these people's going to say, that old thing? Boy, I thought she's never going to get out of the hills of Tennessee. If she can make it, I can too. Just like Dolly Parton, I'm going to be a rat. Mr. Rich's movie coming out about Bobby Joe Womble. <laughs> yeah, baby. And by the way, shout out, Dolly, because I know you're watching, baby. I know all of America saw my Vienna Winnie commercial, and I know that you watched it, and I know that you said, look at that girl. She come from Tennessee just like I did. I bet she has a coat that was made by her mama from all different rags. And now she's going to hit the big time. And you're right, Dolly. I do have a cousin that found a coat that looked like that at Goodwill. Nobody took the time to sew it for me. But you know what? It's still the same kind of story. <laughs> yeah, Dolly. And I want y'all to know that even though I did the commercial for Vienna Weenies, I still consume them. Now listen. Like I said in the commercial, if you don't have time to run over a possum on your own, and so you ain't got no possum stew at home, the next alternative is to get you some Vienna weenies. I didn't just do it for the money. Well, I actually didn't get paid because they said that, well, we'll just talk about that later, but I didn't get paid yet. But it's gonna blow up. I'm so excited. And I'm so glad that all you kind folk are here to see me receive this award. And we will put it on the Walk of Fame. <sighs> this is the stupidest bunch of mess I have ever seen in my life. I don't know why that Kathy would ag her own like that and get her hopes up. My Bobby Joe's always been a special little girl. But you know what? She ain't no star. And she ain't coming out of the hills of Tennessee, baby. She's married to that stupid old Buford. And I just told her not to get married because it will ruin her career. But anyways, my goodness, I'd rather break my arm than talk about anybody in any kind of negative way. But you know what? Our cousin Kathy, you just got to watch out for her because she tries to give people dreams and hopes that I feel are just, I don't know. I don't know about her. I don't know about her. 
So anyways, I'm glad that my cousin Bobby Joe got her grand award and that all you guys were a part of it and got to see it. We will stay tuned to see how my cousin Bobby Joe makes it to California one day and to the big time. I love you guys and I will see you very soon. God bless you and your families. Bye.